Hello everybody, it's Murray here and welcome back to my channel M Stuart Paintings. On today's acrylic painting tutorial we're going to paint this gorgeous tropical sunset beach. I'm going to teach you how to create a light effect, how to paint easy palm trees in a silhouette and how to build up things like texture in things like your waves and your beach itself so you can create this gorgeous acrylic landscape painting. So let's get into it. It's a real easy tutorial today, but you will need the following colors. They are white, yellow, orange, purple, some pink, some blue, a dot of burnt sienna, and some black. Now I have a nine by 12 inch canvas that I've divided into three, and I've got two thirds as the sky and one third as the beach. We're gonna have a far off, um, sort of tree line in the background and we're going to have a beach here and we're going to have some waves coming up towards the shore so all I'm going to do just like usual I'm just going to block in where I've used chalk to create an outline I'm just going to use some cobalt blue just so I've got a rough idea where I want our beach to be we're going to have a dark sort of corners here and we're going to have this far off sort of tree line where you have things like tropical palm trees off into the distance I haven't decided where I want my trees yet so all we're going to do is blocking everything and then I'll decide where I think it would look best so first to go to start we're gonna just paint the Sun on the horizon we're gonna make a gorgeous sunset today so all I'm doing is I'm adding some yellow and white to create a Naples yellow I'm using a big round headed brush and all we're gonna do is just block in our acrylic painting where I paint the canvas burnt sienna we just want to cover it all up with a really nice base coat of a lovely sunset. So all we're doing, we're creating the illusion of heat. So by using white and yellow around the sun and then by adding more yellow, we can create that illusion of heat. Now to create this dark yellow, I've got to the left, all you do is just get bright yellow, add a tiny bit of orange. Be careful because orange is very overpowering and a dot of black, a literally a dot of black just to desaturize it. And you should get this golden yellow color, which is really, really nice. So once you've mixed that all up, if you just sort of blend it into your bright yellow, and all that is is as the sky gets darker, as it gets further away from the sun, but we still want to create a gorgeous sort of effect of heat around our light source, which is the sun. So all I'm doing, I'm just trying to create that and all I'm doing is just blocking in just up to the horizon, just flatten it out, and it's just to shape it. Now, as you get further away from the sun, the sky gets a bit darker. So we're gonna add some pink to that color. So that orangey yellow, we're just gonna add a little bit of pink to it. And we're just gonna make a mixture between orangey yellow and pink. So it's not too harsh a transition. And then all we're gonna do is the sky gets really cool as it gets further off, we're gonna create this blue color I've got pre-mixed in the right. So to make that, all you do is get some purple and some blue and some white and dot of black and you should get the same color. So lots of blue, some purple, lots of white and a dot of black and you should get the same sort of color. Just add more blue than purple just so it's still a lovely cool tone. So as I say, I always have it pre-mixed. I've set up a link for everything in the video. So if anyone wants to know the paints I use or the brushes or anything, they're in the description box below this video. So I'm just making some more of that color just so you can see how I've done it. So it's just blue, purple, and some white, and a dot of black, just to suck a bit of the color out. And you should get this really lovely, cool blue that I've got here. And all that is, is if you think of the sky is getting cooler as it goes towards the corners and it's getting away from the sun. So just again, we want to create a bridge tone between the hots and the colds. So we're going to get some pink, and we're going to get some of our sky color, and we're just going to mix the two together. So just so you've got this nice bridge tone, and we're just going to bridge the between the really, really hot and the real really cool so just by using that bridge tone which is just a mixture between the two the hots and the colds we can just create a nice underpainting and a lovely sky so we've created this just lovely sky so we're going to create the water now so we're going to get some pink and we're going to get some of that cool sky tone and we're going to mix it together but more pink than blue 
So it's the same trick that we just did for the sky, but we're just having more pink than blue. And we've got this lovely sort of, I don't know what colour that is, sort of a purpley lavender colour, like a mauve colour. And all we're going to do is just block it in. And as you can see, because we've still got the darker um, cobalt blue underpainting underneath it, you can still see where your waves are. Now I'm just going to get some more blue to the mix, so I'm just going to get some of that blue that we previously just mixed and I'm just going to darken up that corner because that's where we're going to sign it and also that's the furthest corner away from the sunlight. Now because this area is towards the sun, we're going to add some of that golden yellow which was yellow and orange and a dot of black and we're going to add a little bit of pink to it, just a tiny bit and we're just going to create this lovely sort of peachy sort of orangey pink tone and we're just going to put a bit of heat around our sun so all we're doing we're trying to sort of mirror the sunlight onto the water and just block in a rough thing where the heat is now all i've done is i've dried my work with a hairdryer and i'm just going over the top with now a blender brush and i'm just going to repeat the process but obviously go a little bit slower and just make my transitions a lot better. So if you see with acrylics, if you put a second layer on like now, how much brighter and how much more um, lovely and um, really, really vibrant the colors look just by adding a second layer. So it's a nice easy trick with beginners that are learning with acrylics by just going over the top you can just do what I'm doing and just blend the tones together. If you use things like a blender brush, which is just a very soft headed brush, like a makeup brush, you can just blend the previous tones together. So we've used white for the sun, we've added lots of yellow and white around it, and then we've added orange and yellow and a dot of black to create that tan color. Now all we've done, like just like previously, we've just added some pink to that orange, yellow and a dot of black just to create a bridge tone. So all we're doing, we're just sort of blending it. Because the canvas is dry, that underpainting is dry underneath, we can just softly mix the tones together. And just by adding more pink as we get away from the sun, we can just blur it into not only the background, but the previous level of color. So we've got this lovely light effect and we're going to make some clouds, you see. So we're just going to get some pink and purple. So pink and purple and a little dot of cobalt blue. And we're just going to make a nice cool purple. So a little bit of pink to it. And this is going to be the shadow tone for our cloud. So firstly, we're going to put on a base color, which is a dark shadow tone. And then we're going to put the highlights over the top like normal. So we've got this lovely transition from the sunlight in our sky. So what we're gonna do now is just create a really dark color and we're gonna put the highlights over the top. So we're gonna get some bright pink and just mix that into that mix. And a little bit of the orange and yellow. So we're just gonna mix a really nice warm highlights. So the pink and orange and yellow combined. And with our blender brush, what we're gonna do is just softly blend that into leaving gaps for the shadow just to shine through and we're just going to create the illusion of wispy clouds now there's the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already please do so thank you everyone who's liked and subscribed to the channel already and please turn the bell notification so you can know when we upload brand new tutorials i'm trying to upload a tutorial at least once a week now for all you guys so if anyone would like anything to be taught to them in tutorials please put those ideas for future tutorials in the comments below. Now all I'm doing is just getting some of that orange and yellow and I'm just blending it into the um, previous pink tone and I'm just trying to create where the heat from that sun where the sunlight is just sort of bellowing up. I'm just trying to blend it into the previous pink and purple tones just to give a emphasis on our highlights just so it looks really really pretty and then i'm just going to create a little bit of a darker highlight with pink just to create areas that aren't getting as much sunlight so they're a little bit cooler but they're still bright pink and once it dries obviously acrylics acrylic paints always dry a bit darker and it will look really really pretty and it's just to basically create the illusion of far off wispy clouds 
and I'm just going to get my blender brush I'm just going to gently blend these tones with my finger what a professional <laughs> and I'm just going to make it just look a bit softer just using this gorgeous blender brush now if you make a mistake or a smudge the great thing about acrylics they dry really really quick they're very forgiving so you can always just use a baby wipe and just wipe away any mistakes so if you use a bit too much paint like I just did there or your transition is a bit harsh just I always recommend if you dry your work in each stage if you do make a mistake you can always just literally get a baby wipe and wipe it away and you can just literally re repaint over it so we've got this lovely sky and it's nice and dry i'm just going to use some cobalt blue to just put back in our tree line i still haven't decided what i want there i think we should have a really big palm tree i was going to have far away palm trees but i think that would be a bit daft and because i can still see though the um, cobalt blue peeking through that pink ocean I'm just going to put back in my beach waves um, now we've done the sunsets now we've got our lovely sky I think I'm just going to get some cobalt blue and I'm just going to put an outline where I want the water from the sea that's coming up towards the beach and the shore just where I want things to be so I think I'm going to have a little wave come up here and I'm just going to literally jot this down out of my imagination we can have some water peeling back and we can just sort of have some lines and texture in our sand. So we're going to neaten everything up. We've got this lovely sky now. So we're going to just try to mirror that light onto our ocean. So all I'm doing, just think of a mirror. I'm just trying to match the tones that we just used. So we used white and yellow. And I used some yellow. Then I added a little bit of orange and yellow together to get that darker yellow, that golden yellow. And now I'm just adding some pink to my orange and yellow just to make it brighter and it's just to match the sky so all I'm doing look I'm just trying to match our sky on our ocean and these are the highlights on our water so if you imagine all our sea is getting lovely bits of sunlight and it's just creating those sort of sparkles and sort of highlights on our ocean water and by doing this look it just tricks the eye just matches what we've got and again if you make a mistake or it's a bit rough just take your time just dry your work and just go over with your same paints the same tones and just use something like a blender brush or a soft headed brush and just gently blend the colors so I've got hardly any paint I've got dry canvas and all I'm doing is just gently mixing the tones just to try to get seamless transition and while I've got that sort of sunlight color that sort of yellowy orangey color I'm just going to put some highlights to it looks like the water is just sort of shining on the wet sand as it comes towards the viewer and it's just to create again the illusion of sunlight so that looks fam dabby dozy so I'm just going to neaten it up here with my blender brush just so the transition just looks really nice and again if you just please dry your work before you put any tape we are going to use tape just to create a nice straight horizon and when you're happy with your sky and your horizon, we're going to create a light effect on our far off distance tree line. So how do we do that? We're going to create heat. So we're going to get some orange and yellow and then we're going to add some burnt sienna to our mix. So we're going to add a little bit of burnt sienna, which is the color I always paint my canvas at the beginning of the tutorials. And what that does is it just mixes between orange and yellow some orange and then some burnt sienna and then we're going to add some blue a dot of black and some burnt sienna together to create a really dark brownie blue and again this is like a silhouette color and just by merging the colors together those three tones we can create a light effect so i'm just going to add a little bit of blue and black to that mix just so it's getting darker as it's going away from the sun now we don't want to use too much black because we still want to push this quite far off into the background distance but if you have yellow and orange so have yellow and orange first then add some bright orange then add some burnt sienna so look burnt sienna and then add some burnt sienna to some blue and a little bit of black to get that 
darker tone and then a little bit more blue and black and if you just try to work on the transition it should when we remove the tape dun, 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 create this gorgeous light effect in your work and if you have to just like me where it pulls a little bit of paint off and you just have to neaten it up that's fine it will take two seconds just to put it back and that looks fantastic now we are going to create palm trees we're going to create realistic palm trees so the first thing we're going to do is create the trunk so always remember the base of your trunk is always thicker than the top of your tree so if by mistake you make the top of your tree a little bit too thick just go back and just make the base at the bottom a little bit thicker just so it looks more realistic now how do you paint palm tree leaves well my big hands in the way but all I do is I create one long line in the middle and then I go off diagonally and create little sort of streaks that are coming off diagonally either side of that. So I draw one straight line and then I come off it diagonally. So I do one big line and then I just go diagonally downwards and then I go diagonally upwards. So I've done the downwards and then I'm just going to go the opposite way diagonally upwards. And that should, when the big hand gets out of the way, create a palm leaf. So you do one big line in the middle, go diagonally down in one direction and diagonally the opposite way in the other direction. So watch, you do one big line. So hang on, if we get my bloody hand out of the way. <laughs> Good, dear me. So one line and then just come out diagonally to the side. There we go, diagonally down, there we go. So we've got the big line in the middle. And the big line in the middle is always the longest. So you do the line first and then you come out diagonally in either direction. So big long line, watch. And then go downwards, that's it, you see, look, downwards. And then go in the opposite way, in the opposite diagonal. So diagonally, the opposite way, just so you get these spindly, spiky leaves and it should look like palm leaves. Now our palm leaves are a little bit thin, so I'm just gonna add some water to my brush and some more paint just to thicken them up. I'm just gonna make them a bit more chunky, a bit like me. <laughs> just gonna make them a little bit chubbier and just make them just a bit darker in silhouette just so they stand out. So look, all I'm doing, I'm just going out diagonally. So I do a big line in the middle and then I just come out diagonally downwards and then come out diagonally upwards. So do the big line first, downwards, and then upwards. And using a flat brush, by using a flat brush, it's super thin, and because it's dead straight, it looks really, really pretty. So that's looking great. And because we're using a darker tone in the um, jet black, what that's doing is it's bringing it closer towards the viewer, and because we've got that darker blue tone in the far distance, that's pushing our far away tree line back. So by just using black in the foreground, we've saved our darkest darks to put this right in the foreground to make it look like it's just hanging over the viewer on the beach. So that is super cool. We've got this lovely, lovely palm tree. Now we're gonna add some purple. Now I've got a little bit of crimson there. You don't need crimson. I put some on my palette and I never really used it. But you can if you want to use a dot of red. But all that I'm using is purple, blue and black, so purple, blue and black, just scrape in mind, and if you wanted you could add either a dot of red or a dot of orange, so a little dot of orange just to heat it up, and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a shadow tone that's not too harsh, that's why it's got some purple and a dot of orange, a little bit of blue as well as the black, and I'm just going to come across with my flat brush and just create texture in our beach. So all I'm doing, now we've got this underpainting, we've got this lovely transition in the light. I'm just going to darken up this right hand corner because I really want to frame my composition. I really want to frame the painting. And while I've got that tone, I'm just going to create the shadows of the underside of the waves. So we're just going to make our waves stand out. And I'm not going to go too far upwards towards the painting. 
Now the reason I'm not going too far is we're going to use a more hot tone as we get towards the sun. So this is great because we're at the bottom of the painting. And if you think like all the tutorials what I'm trying to teach you is we're using cooler, darker tones in the foreground. Well, if you imagine we're the viewer and we're standing really far away from the sun on this beach, we're going to be in the shade or we're going to be like a silhouette. So we want to use darker tones in the foreground. And as we work towards the sun, we want to get lighter. So all I'm doing, I've got hardly any paint on my brush. All I'm doing is just doing little squiggles just to give the impression of waves. So I've got very little paint on my brush. I'm just scraping it off on my clothes like I normally do. And all I'm doing is just trying to give the illusion of texture. Now waves, as you go towards the horizon, go more flat. So if you're going diagonally, try to, as you get towards the horizon, go a bit flat. So now we're going to create a hotter tone. So we're going to get some burnt sienna and some orange and mix it into some purple. So burnt sienna, orange and purple. And we're going to add a little bit of blue to that mix some more purple now I always find making the tones is the hardest let's add a little bit of white to it just to suck a little bit of the color out and some black because making realistic tones is quite hard but once you watch the few of these tutorials and you know how to hotten things up with some heat and cool things off with some cools so I think we're gonna add some yellow to the mix just to make it a little bit not as dark a little bit of orange a bit of burnt sienna and some yellow yeah that looks good so you've got this really sort of tanny brown color but it's still got a little bit of purple and blue in it and as i say as we come towards the sun we want to get hotter in tone so that's perfect I'll tell you what it's like it's like yellow okra with a little bit of orange and purple and look, all we're doing, we're doing the exact same trick, we're doing the same texture and we're doing the same waves. But because that tone is a little bit warmer, when it goes towards the sun, it tricks your eye, just like we did with the underpainting. And the tones match, so they're more hot in tone. And all it does is trick your eye and make the transitions look more realistic. So this is a fantastic tutorial because it's super easy, as I keep saying to you, there's not much detail. It's all in the tones and if you can master the tones, you can master anything. So just like the tree, I'm just going to get a little bit more paint and water on my brush. I'm just going to thicken up areas just to make my beach and my waves just look a bit more prominent just so they stand out. Just going to make it a little bit more texturized and a little bit harsh on the shadows just so they look more like big waves. Now you can easily go back and forth between the tones. So if you want to hotten areas up, you just use the tan color. And if you want to darken areas, you just use the more darker shadow tone that we just created. And just to frame the painting, I'm just gonna get some black and add it to the shadow tone. And I'm just gonna darken up this corner just to frame the painting just so our beach looks nice and framed. I'm just gonna add a little bit of detail to my waves just with a fine liner and just neaten it up. But she's looking fantastic. And as I say, it's nothing to do with detail. There's hardly any detail in this painting. It's perfect for beginners and people who are intermediate who are learning how to use acrylics. So all I'm doing, I'm just using some orange and yellow just to highlight that area because that's closer to the sun. So that area will be warmer. And just like normal, if you make a mistake, you can just wipe it out. So I've signed it in the left hand corner. She's fantastic. We've darkened up our corners. We've got this beautiful light effect. This, you've learned how to do a light effect in a far off cliff or tree line. You've learned how to do a beautiful sky where all the highlights and the shadows match. You've learned how to do a silhouette of a palm tree. And it's just a really beautiful landscape painting. So thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. We have plenty of tutorials that should be coming up on the right hand side on my channel here, M Stuart Paintings. So I'm Murray. Take care of yourself, guys. See you soon. Bye.